Yeah, so why don't we see this used a lot more in like uh, a civilian or a, a warfare context with tranquilizers? Yeah, that's a great question. And if they work just like the movies, like holy moly, if you hit a person with a 50 cal, they will fly back like that, but pieces of them will also fly back. It's gonna disintegrate. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's got a nice thumb hole stock, a big chalky stock. I think it's pretty. We got the classic thwip, thwip, thwip. Do uh, silencers really make uh, weapons that silence? Well, they can, absolutely. But it's not like a... Doo, doo. It's not like that classic 80s, like, it's not how it works. It's going to depend upon the caliber and the weapon system. So you have hypersonic and subsonic bullets. Like like my everyday carry right now is a is a nine millimeter. This is a not hypersonic. This is a supersonic bullet. I used to carry back in the day a 45 and 45 ACP is a subsonic bullet. So ah, subsonics okay. are much quieter because there's two factors. There's gases escaping the barrel all at once. Like the pressure coming out of like your standard AR-15 or M4 is like something like 8,000 PS. Uh -huh. So it's hot gases all of a sudden coming out and that sound is as those hot gases come out and interact with your ambient temperature of the atmosphere. What the silencer does is there's baffles on the inside and it kind of works similar to a muffler on a gasoline or diesel engine. It, they have baffles inside and the baffles are usually either just square or rectangle chambers or they're cones. What ah, happens is okay. as the gas leaves, instead of it all expanding at once behind the bullet out into the, you know, the world on the the wild blue yonder it's expanding in these chambers and it does two things it slows down the gas so it doesn't all come out at once which then lowers the pressure as it's coming out it also cools it a little bit too so there's less interaction uh -huh. like it depends upon what you're trying to do so a silencer like the silencer i'm going to be getting for my rifle i don't care as much about sound but i care about reliability uh durability and point of impact and um flash suppression so i want to kind of hide that flash signature with it if you want to go real word. silent you can get a bigger one but then like there's trade-offs you know real real quiet suppressors don't always last as longer as ones that are designed for like sustained combat use subsonic 22 rounds 300 blackout if you get subsonic rounds that's a very effective caliber to suppress but uh, it depends on what you're going for because people suppress weapons for sound but they also suppress weapons for muzzle signature gotcha you know muzzle flash are those the major differences between shooting with and without a silencer yeah so there's a couple point of impact POI is another big one, and um, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Chad from uh, Iraq Vet 8888. He's part of the trifecta that makes up that channel, and he knows more about suppressors and silencers than anybody I know, and he's helped me understand suppressors a lot more. A big one is point of impact. So most suppressors change where your bullet is going to go when they're on versus when they're off. If like, let's like say a rifle or an optic pistol or a, an optic firearm, you're always going to have that suppressor on. You zero that optic with the suppressor on. If you're going to be putting it on and put, taking it off, you're going to have to know you know, your holdovers and where that bullet goes. Like I was shooting a bunch of pistols recently with different suppressors on it. And it was fascinating, like which ones had a similar point of impact versus which ones were, were clearly off at just like, you know, 25 feet. Hawk 21 homemade sound. Can you make a homemade silencer from a spray can? All right, so right here, he's got a homemade silencer and a 100% you can, but you gotta know what to use. That George Clooney movie, it's I'm a big fan of it, Mr. Butterfly. I think it might've been called The American. In that, you see him making a uh, suppressor out of just washers and tubing and piping. All you need is something that's durable that will withstand the pressure of the round you're firing that has baffles in it to slow the escaping gas. That's all you need. I have a bunch of video of me shooting an oil can suppressor. And what's neat about oil can suppressors is oil cans are or oil filters. They're mm -hmm. already threaded. So as long as your muzzle device has the same thread, you just need to drill a hole in the other side and they're pretty effective as a suppressor. Now this looks like a, what is this, a spray paint can? Yeah, or like an aerosol can. Yeah, I don't think that'd make the best host because one, you're gonna have to install baffles into it. It just doesn't work that it's just a big can. Second, the metal is really thin. Because of the pressures aerosol cans and spray paint cans and air spray cans are operating you don't really need super high quality fancy metal you know what i mean for those and i would worry that they would eventually break like rather quickly with the amount of pressure that you're you're running through there 
yes, on 100%, you can homemade. They're fairly inexpensive to make. It depends upon, like, you know, what level of quality and durability you want. But <laughs> I just love this song. You're moving to Tennessee, all my neighbors think I'm crazy because I walk around without, like, uh, a shirt on and shoes or whatever when it's freezing cold outside. But I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> it just, it just cracked me up seeing this dude walk around in the snowy train without a shirt on or... Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, A247 feels nothing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a badass. Tranquilizer. So now we got the tranquilizer gun, huh? All right, so I know we had mentioned this on this story before, but uh, Gotcha stars, uh, it's Goose, but in the lead, and he's smoking. Wow, that's a, that's a callback, man. Well, I don't want to ruin it, but like, go watch Gotcha if you want to see some good dartball action. If you want to see some good- um, Paintball. Well, it's paintball and dart gun action. Yeah. This is one of the things that all the movies do get wrong. Um, darts are very effective for animals. But even something, the tranquilizers that you would use for wolves could kill a person. At least the stuff they used to use. And it all depends upon certain things, right? Like in an enclosed area, if you had like a, you know, a bear or something real dangerous. And often the uh, thing is like an elk would get its antlers caught in something. So like game wardens would go up and they would shoot it like once every 15 minutes. Just Damn. with a low dosage to eventually get it groggy or kind of like, and it would take a while and then they could go untamed it or if, you know if there's no immediate threat you want to use enough drugs to like you know not necessarily put to sleep but maybe put to sleep or disoriented but you want to take your time because you don't want to kill the animal those syringes they have to inject the the drugs into the person or the animal right so often they're under pressure because you think about getting a shot you have a plunger right and you put pressure down on it well these might have gas inside of it to shoot it into there which if you're talking about a bear or something Okay, whatever, you're gonna cause a little bit of tissue damage, but it's a bear. It's real tough, they heal, they're very hardy. But a person, it could cause some serious, serious damage. And the drugs that you use for animals, like I said, even wolves, would kill a person. So that whole like fall asleep immediately, generally like the quickest that it'll happen is about a minute. So most tranquilizer darts when used on animals take between a minute to 15 or a minute to 30 mm. minutes to put the animal to sleep. And it all depends upon, is there a risk? Is this animal gonna hurt something or is there time to like let it fall asleep? Cause then you obviously wanna be safer cause you don't wanna kill the animal. And there's other factors too. Like if it hits a bone, like you could just, the thing could fall out or depending upon how, cause it, there are dart guns, like the, I think the Russians started doing it, tranquilizer darts with uh, the hollow bullets. They'd use real bullets and they'd be hollow and have the, the stuff inside of it and they would use that on animals. Then it evolved to like, you know, pneumatic powered guns. So you could have a cartridge with gunpowder to launch it. You could have a pneumatic gun. You could even do like almost like a spear gun, like um, rubber drawstring or whatever to, to, to launch it. So there, there's different methods, but if you hit a bone, you could shatter a rib. You could, you know, shatter a, a bone and, and mess up that animal. So you gotta be really careful. That's like one of the only super unrealistic things whenever you see a dark gun in the movies and they just pass out right away. Anesthesiologists, you know, they go to a specific school for that yeah there's a whole profession devoted to how much how much you should give to somebody in a surgery situation so i imagine just there's not one size fits all kind of dart gun it's kind of tranquilizer darts for anybody yeah for, uh, every person is different every animal is different and even in the same species of animals each animal itself is different so i don't want to like you know poo poo on that but it's uh that's like a, a big thing most movies and video games get wrong it's a very very dangerous um nuanced subject matter yeah so why don't we see this used a lot more in like uh, a civilian or a, a warfare context with tranquilizers yeah that's a great question and if they work just like the movies like holy moly because like you know the goal is to stop the enemy right the goal isn't necessarily to kill them it's just unfortunately killing them is mm -hmm. the most effective way often to stop an enemy but if you could capture them you could get all this intel right but it, that's just basically why they, they don't work like the movies you'd have to like get the dosage right for a person and they could just pull it out you know real ow hey what are you doing you know what i mean and, <laughs> but in order to inject everything fast enough and to make it work fast enough it's just it, it's not very effective because yeah man can you imagine if police would just be able to go boop, 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 to like all these bad guys and then we rehabilitate them and now they're good guys and now they're like you know selling flowers <laughs> and fixing the community and doing ayahuasca and wait, like wait, you know find their inner child are yeah, right. You know, well, ironically, ketamine is one of the drugs that you often use in uh, in tranquilizer dart. Oh, so we just call them tranquil dart. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be great. Shoot myself with one of those. Fun. <laughs> a little peace and quiet, you know. Uh, but yeah, that that's effectively why they don't they don't really work in that scenario. It's it's really just like an animal based thing when you have the time and, and the science behind it to use it. And it's it's like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty nuanced. Otherwise, it'd be great. 
All right, sniper rifle time. Look at that skull. Oh, cool. Look at that gun. Looks like it's a bullpup. Look, look at that suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bullpups work great. Center of gravity, you know, they, you can get a much more compact firearm with same length of barrel. So that's that's the big advantage. Mm. And for a sniper rifle, a bullpup is totally fine because you don't have to worry about super quick mag changes like you do for a close quarters battle, which ironically, close quarters is one of the reasons they use bullpups often. But yeah, it's just easier, more compact package, but same effective range. Now that skull yeah. reticle did seem very realistic to me, unfortunately. Oh, really? Yeah, and this one right here. So if you notice from side to side, you have all those tick marks or mill markings, and that's to lead a target. I think almost even more important down below, that's just a skinny little, you know, nothing reticle. For drop. No, nothing's on it. Yeah, so there's nothing for bullet drops. So you have no idea where to put that for range. You'd have to adjust gotcha. all your scopes every time. So unfortunately, like they got it 50%. They got it like half, I mean, half right. 47, he could probably calculate his own drop in his head, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, like, I'm sure his barcode buzzes like a secret signal and, like, like <laughs> buzzes Morse code to him. When he's and, on uh, target. Yeah. It's interesting, like, how it's this zoom in is like a camera, like, tick, tick, tick. And you know, and again, he's doing headshots, but bullseye headshots from multiple different ranges. So he's going from like two to 300 meters to 400 meters. And you're going to have to put that bullseye at different spots in order to score the shot that you want. Oh, maybe not. What's the biggest caliber bullet they got out there that could make a guy do some acrobatics when you hit him? So, you know, 50 BMG would do it. Because we've seen that in uh, in some yeah. weapons. Yeah. In some movies, we've seen a guy, he gets shot by a sniper rifle. And he just goes flying, you know? Last Man Standing, I remember when that came out. Oh my goodness, there that was go. hilarious. She, the double 45 ACP 1911s and bad guys are flying backwards. It doesn't really happen. If you hit a person with a 50 cal, they will fly back like that, but pieces of them will also fly back. It's going to disintegrate. Whatever caliber is strong enough to do that is also strong enough to tear pieces off your body. The Golden Dragon. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, this thing looks so cool. This looks old school. Now, again, that reticle, you, you yeah. see that reticle? I mean, that's probably fine for like a 22 planker or whatever, but there's there's no information in that reticle. It's not letting you know anything for leading a target or for, you know, ranging it out. So, and, and that's unfortunate. But the gun is super sexy looking. That thing's great. Yeah, it's got that uh, it's got like golden, a dragon on the side. Uh, gilding on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the gilding, that's right. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's got a nice thumb hole stock, a big, big chalky stock. I think it's pretty. And that scope reminds me of a lot of like the old west style, you know, the 1800s era scopes where they were really long because they, you know, didn't have the technology when it came to lenses down quite yet. The thing you might see in Red Dead Redemption 2. Like how he's creeping, dude. I love his pajamas. I want those pajamas so bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Cultural appropriation, but I love it. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> cultural sharing. It's celebrating culture. Celebrating culture. Cultural appreciation. Cultural appreciation. Thank you. I love those pajamas. They're not pajamas, guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm going to use them as pajamas. Sure, morning will I wonder if he's got the traditional or if those are regular dress shoes or if those... I have some of those from, like, I bought them at a karate tournament, like the traditional Japanese, like, slippers. Definitely don't fit anymore. Looks like a, a Drew Xena 34s. Hey, am I got this right? Dragonov? Is this? Yeah, that looks like a Dragonov. And it looks like the scope's pretty accurate. It looks like you have some uh, pretty detailed markings on the inside of the scope. The one weird thing about it is multiple chevrons. So one of the reasons a lot of people use chevrons is it's generally your standard generic military sized male. You put that chevron on them and you can use that as like kind of a range finder. You uh. can guesstimate how far away by how much on the body that fills up. And then like for quick shots, you just put the center of the chevron, whatever, for close up quick shots but okay. if you want to fine point it you use the tip there's no reason to have multiple chevrons going down those should just be mill markings i've never seen a scope like that before but again i'm not a sniper i'm not a super long distance shooter i'm getting into shooting distance more but like most of my uh real life stuff has been between like 400 to like five you know, yards. And then now we're now we're on this weird camera lens. Like there's a little information in this scope, but this, this scope doesn't look very realistic to me. I don't know why they would have like a weird diamond in the center. The weapon itself looks, I mean, that's, that's you know, a Dragonov. It's a very effective, you know, 762 by 54 Russian. That's a big honking dangerous round. I would not want to get shot with it. That is the reason I wear level four plates. This is cool, man. I like, I like all the lighting in the color palette for this game. Uh, this, uh, is this a dock? It looks like a dock. 
Yeah, if there's super good environments that you, yeah, that you go through, you go through from the most industrial type environments in these kinds of games to the most pedestrian to like nightclubs, to high society. I love it. You do everything in this one. Like, so I'm assuming sneaking around and being stealth is like uh, encouraged in the game or is there also like... Yeah, it's funny. You and I, we're reviewing the weapons from this game, but in a lot of scenarios, you're supposed to be doing things undetected. So you mm. have to kind of use whatever you find in the environment or find a way to turn the environment against to your assailant or to you know even if it's something as simple as uh dropping something on their head you know or pushing them over a cliff gotcha all right so the shaska 33 it's like an ak style weapon yep yeah yeah definitely that style it doesn't look exactly like an ak-47 and it, what's funny is um or you know akm or ak variant but yeah it, yeah it's definitely an ak inspired firearm the magazine the curvature of that i'm not gonna be too curious, but it doesn't yeah it looks like looks like uh, a lot of weapons that we've seen before it's funny it's interesting that they always they try to give them different names maybe for copyright purposes <laughs> well and this one yeah it was also i don't know change it up a little bit it, I guess I'm sure I think copyright has something to do with um a lot of stuff I don't see AK-47 being in like you know copyright protected or AKM there right. is some differences on this for sure like the sights are, are very different on it it's almost got like German looking sights to it it's got some like kind of Dragunov inspired you know forend on it and uh it's definitely a blend of a couple different things but AK inspired for sure nice Krugermeyer Krugermeyer oh. sounds like a uh, type of sausage you know, it sounds like that crazy dude on um oh what's that cartoon called uh with the secret agent and uh it's just hilarious oh, uh, archer stupid. archer yeah it's just... secret agent krugermeyer uh, oh my god <laughs> archer's so it's just so good all right so the krugermeyer you know what this reminds me of this kind of reminds me of the ruger 22 I mean, it's just this classic fixed barrel 22 that you pull the and i'm not saying it looks like it but the operation is oh my goodness this outfit what <laughs> Is that Agent 47 just clowning around? Oh no way! Yeah. So you know, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna gig that. Okay, I'm gonna. You should have an incendiary round to shoot flammable <laughs> gas to explode. Otherwise, it's not gonna. Yeah. But <laughs> I just thought that he looks so cool just on that balcony going back and forth. And we're supposed to be talking about the guns. But this he is looks just, so serious like, in that outfit. You know, and like, and like he's not even like he doesn't care. Like, yeah, he's. You know what yeah, reminds he, me? Yeah, of? he's just walking. Yeah. U.S. Marshals, the Fugitive Two. With the, the opening, right? With Tommy Lee Jones and that goofy, like, weird mascot outfit. And just, I don't know if he's carrying a pizza or what. He just throws in the trash and pulls out a gun. It's awesome. Oh, man, that's a great scene. So this might be an integrally suppressed pistol from looking at it. And those do exist. They actually, those Rugers that I was telling you about, the CIA's used them before, internally suppressed. And 22 is a great little assassin's route. You get up close and personal. There's not a, you know, it doesn't have, 22 is even by himself. Even the high velocity ones are, are not that wild. And so when you get some subsonic ammunition up close and personal with an integrally suppressed pistol, that's definitely an assassin's weapon. That's an effective weapon. Great clip to look up. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, Collateral. One of Tom Cruise's best performances. Michael Mann. There's a scene when they're at the jazz club and he's using a internally suppressed 22 to dispatch one of his targets. So, <laughs> this is goofy ass run with that thing. Oh my God. Oh, look at this motorcycle. That's such a cool bike. I'm sorry, I'm a motorcycle fanatic. At one point in my life, I owned 17 motorcycles. Oh my so gosh. So classic. Yeah, you know, got back from my second tour in Iraq and I bought a bunch of uh, beat up bikes off Craigslist and then I just fix them and sell them. And so I kind of chilled out after getting back. Nice, Paul. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, we got a little guy. Yeah. Last one, custom five millimeter. I've never seen anything like this before. Did they make them this small? Does something like this exist? Give me one second. Oh, here we go, folks. I'll back this. So this is a standard full-size gun. This is like your standard GI 1911 used in World War II, Vietnam. Look at this little guy. Yep. Whoa. The 70% so, scale it's so model. so cute. Yeah, right? It's really good. It shoots 380. Also, John Moses Brownie, 380. So this thing's kind of fun. It's a cute little gun. I like it a lot, Um, but it gets even better. So this is uh, pretty much my everyday carry for the most part, right? Full, uh, okay. whatever, okay? But wow. yeah, sometimes I feel a little, you know, when he... Look at this little... Sneaky. Yeah, a little, little sneaky that? boy. So 
This That's is awesome. also a 380. This is a Ruger LCP, and this is what I'll use if like clothing or whatever, or if I need a backup gun or just super deep concealment. This thing works great. And this is definitely, you know, close in. This isn't something I'd want to take a long shot with, but they get even smaller. You want to get real small. North American Arms makes a tiny little 22 single action revolver. That's uh, wow. I like super sexy. So yeah, so th these okay. things absolutely do exist. All right, cool. All right, special weapon time. Ah! Ah, ah, ah. Man, just goes to show you that AG-47 can turn anything into Oh a my god, you know the best part about that too is somehow, somehow he figured out maybe put a little more pressure on his right hand because that branch torqued yeah. around. It like, did curve, it, it curved a little bit. <laughs> and he had like just it the curved. right inertia and momentum and like finesse that it like stayed straight. It didn't even arc or anything, just like... Straight, straight line, straight line, turn, and like, no no drop, man, that was, uh, I gotta watch that, I'm gonna watch that again, that was, that was the <laughs> Look funniest at that. thing ever. Yeah, I feel like it curved a little bit, he got the right arc on that, man, it's, that thing's it's, fun. It's following the sidewalk, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. How you know when I first saw the briefcase, I was expecting an H&K MP5. Heckler and Coke actually designed a briefcase with a trigger on it that'll shoot their little MP5K out of it. It's just <laughs> full executive protection kind of that's stuff, awesome. which that's kind of crazy. So I was expecting him like shoot out of the briefcase or something. No, we're just going to throw it. That's kind of a fault. <laughs> I love dude. that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, that's it. Those are the weapons from Hitman Free. Paul, what did you think about the weapons that we saw today? Comment on the game. Like, it's beautiful. Even that last special weapon scene, no matter how comical, or even though it was really comical, like the leaves and the colors and just like the color yeah, palette. It's a beautiful game. It's great. Uh, the weapons all look cool. The reticles, most of the reticles on the sniper rifles kind of left a little more to be desired. Right. Uh, but as far as the gameplay and the weapon functions and everything, uh, I liked all of that stuff. That was my only real uh, criticism is just the, the reticles on the long distance rifles. So Now, the thing about the Hitman series is that it's always been about the creativity. So even though we went over the weapons today, mm -hmm. that's not how I would play the game. I would go for the sneaky kills. I'd put on the costumes. I'd sneak around. And I'd wait for that perfect moment to strike. And that's how I yeah, want to play with, the game. With your briefcase. That's right, with the briefcase. <laughs> Head on over to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. Check me out at Mab11B and Thunderpunk Radio on Instagram. Folks, if you want to hang out with me a little bit, head on over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. Take care, everybody. Catch you on the flip side.